I'm speaking on applying brain power to foster creative thinking. But this evening, I want to lead you to a part that does not seem the usual. Think of the wind, the brush of the wind against the leaf. The tree is bending under the force of rain. A flood approaching, a mudslide, the wave rolling. Insect organization, perfect, incomparable. Think of you breathing, you working, you moving. Look at this plant standing before you. Nature has not only crafted, but has created the greatest ingenuity that exists. Man is yet to even come close to touching what nature has to offer creativity. Nature runs its own. If there be wisdom, nature and does this wisdom, if there be complexity of forms. We talk about biodiversity, you hear that word. But there are millions and millions and millions of diversities. And each expresses itself in the most simple way, as simple as taking a step. Yet, since almost 1970, science has been trying to get humanoids to do a single step. If we want to think about creativity, I call you somewhere this evening. Where is that? Nature. You and I are of nature, born of nature, made by nature, crafted by nature, perfected by nature. Who is it to go to? than the maker and the perfecter of creativity. When we talk about creativity, we often say so many things. From since morning, we've had several ways to create. But do you know why you are talking about creativity? Because you're an inanimate being. You have a mind. You have a brain. So if we want to change the university system, the education system, we often go looking at inanimate to teach us the ways to go. But we're made from nature. So why don't we go back to nature and ask nature certain questions? Schooling is not new. Actemite, the school, ever had a drop of sugar in your room, and the moment you know it, a string of ants are taking that sugar away. Anybody? Anybody? How did they go? Pheromone system. The scavenger ant or the scout ant goes about. You think it's aimless, but it's not. Finds the sugar without a whistle, without a cell phone, without mast without short wavelength radio. In the next few seconds, you see an army of ants line up. Where are they going? That spot. They don't miss their track. I speak? Huh? They line up. They pick it up. They take it back. Every inch is gone. In a few more seconds, none is there again. How organized can we be? Look at the birds. Billions of birds are flying. We call it memorization. No two birds ever crashes. Yet, billions are flying. Formation. What technology has advanced to that point? Not even our drones. Schools of fishes, billions of them, move through the ocean. What has ever gone close to that? The advancements we seek 
the creativity we seek, the complexity that we are supposed to deal with the teacher's creativity is already with us. The greatest man in history, the wisest of men, whether it be of the Bible, Solomon, check out Solomon's Proverbs, all nature-centered. He says, you sluggard, go check the ant. He will teach you some manners about diligence and work, discipline, determination. Everybody here this morning, since morning I've said to you, you can't get this just sitting down and drinking a cup of tea. You don't wish it. You don't even pray it. You work it. But if you are to look at nature, you will find solutions. You will need to kill yourself, rack your head. The greatest school is not in the four walls of our school where I teach you sometimes. The greatest school is outside our four walls. It's right there, teaching you millions and millions of information, knowledge. How does a baby goat know what to do if there's no schooling? Schooling isn't anything new. Nature has perfected schooling. We are the one not learning from nature. And so we are struggling with what is called what? Schooling. Diversity is nature's endowment. Diversity is not a problem. Diversity is a gift. So I tell you today, creating the next solutions for schools and education and advancement and all of that is not so much of how much you can sit and tear yourself into pieces. Take a walk outside. The next leaf that falls from a tree, think of it. Newton, gravity, who taught him? Nature. An apple drop on his head. And, huh? Archimedes, who taught him? Up trust. Nature. The greatest men in history, the wisest men in history, have not gone far but to stay with nature. Because it's already perfected. We're just to learn from it. So I call you, when you step out, take a keen look at nature. The bird fly past. What is that? A lizard walk by. That's a class session about to start. Is that you scream, run away? You just got flunked out of that class. Nature stands everywhere. What's the work echo doing in your room? If it wasn't there, mosquito would probably take you to death. There is lessons everywhere in nature. And because we were born of nature, made of nature, our greatest challenge has been working against nature. Today, of the 70 digit goals, all are nature-centered. Those are global goals, isn't it? For matter by global leaders, isn't it? But each and every one is nature-centered. Even the one that we are concerned here, SDG4, quality education. The last man that came here spoke what is dear to my heart. But I always use nature to paint the picture. No tree travels abroad, Japa, to get nutrients, do they? The solutions are not abroad. The solutions are around you. They're right there in nature. Because whatever challenges we have, nature already has a solution for it, has perfected it. But when we do not look closely, we don't check closely, we begin to go out to look for what is not there in the hope that when we go so far, eventually we arrive somewhere. There's no amount of wishing insanity that can bring order. We must look closely and ask ourselves, where is the classroom of nature? It is everywhere. Some of the greatest inventions on earth today were nature inspired. From flying in little planes to dragonfly inspiring the helicopter to the kingfisher beak inspiring the um, bullet train. To plant leaf inspiring solar panel. To uh, 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 the skin of shark inspiring what? 
swimsuit. What gecko pad inspiring what? Climber suit. All the uh, inspirations and inventions on earth has been. Now, they go there. So much of it. Nature has answers for all that we need to do. But when we keep looking away from nature, we lose the possible answers that are right there. Now, there's no better library than the library of nature. No better data bank. Big data is nothing compared to the data nature already stored. Actually, what we call big data is what we took from nature and put in some inanimate place and say big data. Where did it come from? Therefore, if we must change a new path, we must see life from nature perspective. We must reboot our mind and realign it with nature and see the solution. Whether you are making a dress or you are cooking a new food. Anyway, where are you going to get it in to cook the food anyway? Is it inanimate food? Nah. All the E we have gone, there's still no E food yet. Working with nature is working solutions that have no setbacks, solutions that have no side effect, solutions that are seamless because they work and work alike. If inspirations that come from nature are ruining our world, Let's take even the ant hill, the termite ant hill. Size for size, the average man is 5.7 feet. That's about 68.4 inches. And the termite is just an inch long. Yet the termite and ant built, if we were to measure it height for height, Bosch Khalifa is a joke. That tells you we have not even attained if we take it measure for measure. They build skyscrapers by their size. That does not require any air conditioning. Super cool. So that in Zimbabwe, it was used as a model to design a building that cools itself. How many of you know this? The Gen King Tower, Tower in London, built after a sponge. So that when the wind comes, it rises up and there's no breaking and bending under the wind. Nature has inspired, and every time you tap to nature, there is no side effect. Like I said, nature inspired solutions are seamless, consistent, functional, productive, and progressive. So when you step out from here, ask yourself what do I want to do? What's nature's, nature's answer for me? If you were singing, listen to the birds, and you know what singing is. Huh? If it was cooking, check out ants and the rest of them. You see how they make food. They don't, they don't set fire, but they know what to do. Nature has perfected creativity. You're sitting before me, nature's asking you, what do you want from me? I have all that you need. No wonder nature is called Mother Nature. Thank you very much.